first of five videos about the history of transportation in Yuma presented by the Yuma Crossing National Heritage Area. My name is Emily and I'm going to be your guide as we travel back in time. Today we are going to go all the way back to the 18th century to learn about the origins of the covered wagon and how this unassuming vehicle brought thousands of American settlers to and through the Yuma area. Now, before we get started talking about this history, it is important to note and acknowledge that while the American settlers were the first Western culture to live in Yuma, there were cultures already living in this area. The Quitsan and Kokopa Indian tribes have been calling Yuma home for centuries, and it's important to remember that we didn't discover Yuma, we came upon it and encountered these other cultures while we were here. So, now that we're ready, let's go ahead and get this wagon train rolling. So, the first covered wagon was known as the Condesoga wagon. It was invented in 1717 by German immigrants, um, and they needed a big sturdy wagon to help them carry lumber and coal through the rough terrain of Eastern Pennsylvania. So if you don't know, Eastern Pennsylvania is part of the Appalachian Mountains. It is not nice and smooth like it is here in the desert. The roads are very curvy and could have been very rocky. And so it was not the easiest place to navigate, especially with a lot of heavy supplies like lumber and coal. And so this wagon was vital to establishing businesses and helping build homes in the Eastern Pennsylvania region. But no one could imagine that just a little over a hundred years later, another iteration of this Condestoga wagon would be used to carry thousands of American immigrants from the East to the West across the United States to settle the Great Plains and the Western US. And that other wagon was known as the Prairie Schooner. You may have heard of it before. It was a much lighter and more versatile version of the Condestoga wagon. And so this Prairie Schooner, it was sturdy enough to carry about 2000 pounds of supplies, but it was light enough that it could be pulled by oxen, horse, or mules, whatever people chose to use. And it could also navigate the really unpredictable terrain of the prairie states. And so this prairie schooner was the vehicle of choice by uh, families and single people moving out west. Um, most people, unlike in this photograph here, they didn't ride in their wagons. They actually would walk alongside their wagons. There were a lot of reasons for this. Um, most people used oxen and oxen need someone to lead them. So someone always had to be leading those animals. Also, people needed to use every single ounce of space that they had in their wagons. And so they couldn't afford to put human cargo in there, not unless they were very old, very sick, or very young. Plus, the ride was not the most comfortable. Wagons, especially prairie schooners, did not have any type of suspension. So it was a very bumpy ride. And can you just imagine making that journey? in a wagon. I mean, on average, it took about four to six months to travel across the United States. And there weren't any cities with hotels or gas stations or fast food restaurants where you could stop and eat and relax. They had to put up their own tents and cook their own food and sleep under the stars. It was definitely very different from a cross-country journey that we might make today. So how did all of these wagons get here to Yuma? Well, uh, like I said earlier, people started moving across the United States in about the 1840s. Those very early settlers, they settled in Northern California and Oregon. But how and when did they get to Yuma? 
Well, the 1849 gold rush, which you may maybe have heard of, that happened. And one of the routes into California for those seeking their fortune in gold was through Yuma. Yuma was chosen because it was one of the safest spots to cross the Colorado River. Here in Yuma, the river naturally narrows between two bluffs called Indian Hill and Prison Hill. You may know of them. Uh, today, you can find the ocean to ocean bridge across those bluffs. And the river back in the 1800s was much larger and wider and more unpredictable than it is today. It was really difficult to cross. That natural narrowing made it a lot easier to cross the river here in Yuma. And so as you can see in this image, we've got our wagon trains. They're getting on what's called a ferry there on the river. And that ferry is going to take them across the river. And this is how thousands of not only American, but also Mexican emigrants came through the area. And while most of these people just traveled through Yuma, some of them did settle in the area, especially after the military established a fort, which is those buildings up on top of the hill there. That is Fort Yuma. You can still see some of the buildings on the California side of the river today. They're right there on the Quitsan side. Um, you can see them. They use some of them for administrative purposes. Um, but when that fort was established, people began to see the area as a place where they could live. Uh, it was safer from maybe outlaws or Native American attacks that maybe could have happened. And so we start to see people who weren't coming to make their fortune in gold, but more to make their fortune off of those seeking gold. So uh, just a fun fact, most of the people who made the big bucks during the gold rush weren't the ones finding the gold. They were the ones supplying those finding the gold or hunting the gold. And so you could make a lot of money with a hotel or a tavern or a restaurant or just a little uh, supply shop. And so those started to pop up here in Yuma and we start to get a little, little tiny town here. And the army also chose to expand. They realized that they could utilize the Colorado River to bring supplies here to Yuma. And so in 1865, the Yuma Quartermaster Depot was established. A quartermaster is an army officer in charge of supplies. And so that, that quartermaster here in Yuma, he collected supplies not just for Fort Yuma, but also for all of the forts in the state of Arizona. And so Yuma was vital to not just establishing our city, but to establishing cities and towns throughout the entire state. And while much of that supplies was brought up the river by steamboat, which we'll talk about in our next video, the supplies got from Yuma to the other forts on wagon trains. And so not only did wagons bring people here to Yuma, they also took supplies out into Arizona and helped sustain other cities. And so you can see in these images here, that top left one, that's an actual army escort wagon that we have here at the Colorado River State Historic Park, which is the location of the former Quartermaster Depot. So that is a wagon we have, and it would have been used by the army to carry supplies into Arizona. The picture just to the right of that is of an actual military wagon train going through the desert. You can see all the dust <laughs> they're kicking up for definitely in the desert. And then that bottom is just a wagon that we have the entrance uh, to the park, which was the former Quartermaster Depot. And so as you can see, the history of the covered wagon is long and super important to Yuma because not only did it bring people here, but it helped sustain the people here and helped establish the whole state of Arizona. Did you like what you learned today? Learning everything there is to know and probably more than you wanted to know about covered wagons? Well, if you enjoyed yourself, 
please check out our next video all about steamboats and how they helped establish early Yuma. Hope to see you all again soon. Bye! Thank you.